This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What's going on, Reefing Fan March here, Fragbox TV. Let's do an uh, unboxing video. We got some new corals in from Indonesia. Step one, gloves. Step two, go to haunted basement. Step three, avoid ghosts. Razor blades from March's hidden, not so hidden spot. Step five, coffee, even though it's midnight. Six, unpacking buckets. Secrets of the trade. If someone out there is watching this and can maybe help me, I want to ship some aquariums to the United Kingdom from Canada. Do you have any idea, any shipping company, anyone I can use to get these over there in affordable fashion? Maybe someone out there watching, please hit us up, comment below, or email us, fragboxcorals at gmail.com. How can we get these boxes to United Kingdom? Inexpensive method. M. I wonder if the M is for March. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, if you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. This is an unboxing video, which is not normal here. Actually, is it normal? Yeah, it kind of is normal. I do quite a few of these. Um, we get in corals from overseas, and then we kind of do a vloggy sort of update, and I'll unbox them, and I'll show you what they look like, and talk to you about it, and tell you what's going on in the store, in the life of March. It's, um, it's become very vloggy. It's a store, but the lights are out, but we specialize in saltwater aquariums, everything to do with corals. Um, some fish, kind of, not too much fish, but corals. This is the real passion. This is the real backbone. This is what gets March excited. This is what makes me talk in third person. How's that for a tripod? Hello, yes, I shaved, it was time. Okay, what else is new? How do we feel? Is that good? Do we like that angle? New angle, who this? Let's open one and then we'll kinda, we'll get into it. And we'll see what's, uh, what's up with these beautiful corals. I kind of forgot what I ordered, actually. If I'm being completely honest, this was a little while ago, and then we had our Black Friday craziness. New, looks like, oh, damn, look at this. Okay, first one to answer correctly gets bragging rights. What is this? This is a very small, it's very small. Usually we get these a lot bigger. I think, if you haven't guessed yet, if you haven't guessed yet, I think this is a Cynaria just based on the skeleton. It looks really good, but that is tiny. And I actually really like that because cyanarias typically come huge, but our customers have small tanks. So I think I might be the only guy out there that actively looks for small, meaty LPS corals. Like I'm always asking suppliers for the smallest, acanthophilias, cyanarinas, or cyanarias, open brains, scolies, plate corals, any sort of LPS. Um, what's new in the box? If you guys, would like to come say goodbye to our dear friend Tia. She resigned this week, so this will be her last week with us here. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be different. You know, she was here four years. Beautiful open brain. Look at that. Uh, Synthelia escaping me because I'm thinking about Tia right now. Um, four years she was with uh, with the team here, and it was really an honor and a pleasure to work with her every single day. She brought really good energy to the team, to the store. You guys have grown to, to, to love her on the channel. A lot of you guys think that we're dating, which we are not. She's with a very nice guy. Um, but yeah, she's uh, time for a change. She's gonna move on. Four years was it was a lot of fun. So if, if anyone would like to come in and say hello to this beautiful Acropora tenuous. Okay, I'm kind of hoping that I get some acro crabs in here or gorilla crabs or pests because um, we have a mantis shrimp in the store, and I don't know what he eats yet, and I'm hoping to feed him some live foods. Uh, I got a little sidetracked there, but like I was saying, if you want to come say goodbye to Tia before she moves on to the next chapter in her life, it'll be uh, this will be the last week here in the shop, so you can come and do that. But um, this ship will continue sailing, boys and girls. Our, you know, staff, they come, they go, they learn, I learn, everyone grows, and... Um, I've just been so so lucky with the staff over the years with like I, I I can't say enough good things the team the guys here even right now with our new team that we have uh, we call uh, new Ray Eli Mark Kavina Leandro Fragmaster 2.3 awesome awesome team again Blastamusa now when these come in they look very much mm, like poop they're retracted it, this is not a good sign for coral that you would typically buy in a shop. But right now the water is super, super uh, clear. Let me show you the water. I know it's a little bit boring, but 
I'm boring. Okay, so check out the water. This is how they ship them. A little bit of carbon in each bag, more for the hard corals than anything. And it's clear, it's not mucky, it's not stinky, it's just perfect. Still a really nice time of the year to be shipping. And I'm walking over here because I want to show you the mantis. Uh, he's sleeping, but maybe we can wake him up real quick. It's a zebra mantis. Do you want to say hi to a bunch of people? Oh my god, there he is. Oh, oh, hello. Guys, help us name him. I'm actually obsessed with this little animal. And what does he eat? Because I've tried uh, hermits, no interest. I've tried snails. So next step will be some, some shrimp, I guess, some other live foods. But I'm really, really curious to watch him hunt and eat. This is the one that burrows in the sand. And we set up this whole little, uh, we've cast a flat six just for him. Or her, or it, or whatever it identifies as. We don't judge. I shouldn't make comments like that, because one time someone got very upset that March made a joke about people picking genders. As I'm doing this, people always ask in the comments, March, don't you dip the corals that you're putting into your frag system? Don't you have to dip because of pests that come in? Yes, you should. And you should always dip everything that goes in your tank. And you know what? I watched a podcast last night and our friends over at Tidal Gardens, actually, let me play this video. First. He explained it, I think, better than I ever could. So, you know what? I hope he doesn't mind me using his video here. Tidal Gardens. And it's a podcast with Phil from Polyp Lab. What up, Phil, fellow Canadian? This is an ad, because I'm not, what? Why is this an ad? I have YouTube Premium. Skip, get out of here. Computer's not working. I can't believe I'm about to do this off my phone, but you have to hear it from, from his mouth, not mine. An obvious Funny. to have a they can rely on. Funny French Canadian accent. Kind of video. I talked a lot about uh, how there really isn't a perfect dip out there. Yeah. I uh -huh. think that's kind of an unrealistic expectation for any product or any process. And I think that the folks that expect any specific dip to take care of all of your issues and just be like, I dipped my corals, check, right? That's not a thing, right? Business of dipping corals, they're not, they're not a professional coral farm, they're not a store. Simply put, they're just the end user getting it into their tank. And they read online that you should dip your corals, and you should. Uh-huh, he's right. The problem that you run into, though, is that when you're bringing in these corals, they are stressed out. Like They've this. They've been you know, shipping for like the last 24 hours, and they're at their weakest point that they're really ever gonna be. And at that point, in doing the right thing of dipping, now you just killed the coral. Right. And, and from a business point, that is that is now a DOA concern on my end. Okay. Even though- I think we're getting the point. Um, so, like he said, I couldn't have said it better. They're at their weakest point that they're probably ever going to be. There is such a great risk in importing, you know, it take, he said 24 hours. It's longer than that. These have probably been in the box for closer to 40 hours. And so if I dip right now, it is going to be a death sentence for a lot of these corals. When if I don't dip, most of them are going to be fine. Most of them don't have pests. I'm doing a visual, visual inspection. We're keeping wrasses in all the tanks. And it really does fall on the end consumer to dip because, there, like he said, there's no dip. I'm focusing on this because this is usually my go-to, but it's not going to kill everything. So I'm not going to dip with this and then also dip with Coral RX and then also dip with Polyp Lab Primer and then dip with Red Seas Dip X and then use, you know, there's so many, Brightwell has their own one as well. Everyone has one. Um, this is my favorite. This is uh, what I found is the strongest on pests, but the least, uh, like it's the most gentle on the corals. But again, it's not going to kill everything. Um, but it is definitely going to stress out the coral right now when they're already in a stressed out state and you, I risk killing a lot of them. So from a business standpoint, it really just, it makes zero, zero sense. And I'm so happy that someone else um, gets it. Well, it's not just someone else. Anyone that does this the way I'm doing it uh, for a living with a store, you do not dip corals coming out of a box when you are unpacking. It just doesn't happen. Are, are some pests gonna get through? Maybe. Uh, show me a reef tank that you've had long enough that doesn't have pests. It doesn't exist. Um, this is a very nice symphilia, but I've gone down a dipping uh, kind of hole here, so I'm gonna continue because it feels right. As I'm unboxing them, I'll continue to talk to you, even though it takes a lot more time to do this with one hand on the camera and one hand doing this. So the point is the, the dip is not always gonna kill everything. 
It's kind of like Aptasia, and this is an idea I took from Jake Adams, is you're never gonna be 100% Aptasia free if you keep a reef tank long enough. You're gonna get them at some point, and once you have them, it just becomes a part of the hobby. You manage them. Sometimes there's more, and sometimes there's less. You grab Aptasia X, you add peppermint shrimp, you add bergia, you add copper band butterflies. This is a beautiful orange plate coral. I'm gonna stick them over here with this other one. I like to try and keep them together so there's not so much aggression between the corals. So I'll start to organize them um, based on species and, and who's gonna sting who. So that was uh, something that he said in a video that just really struck a chord with me. Um, you're not going to have a tank Without them, they're like I've tried. Uh, they're they're microscopic when they're when they're when they're breeding when they're really small and they're gonna make their way in and you just you manage them and it's not fun but it's part of the hobby it's part of doing it and this is very difficult with one hand and the same goes for pests um, you manage them you can try your best but in no store that I know of is gonna be able to quarantine stuff that's coming in. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. Like 99% of the stuff that's coming out of this bag, they're clean. They look good. Um, what are we looking for when we're looking for pests? There's nothing that eats plate coral. Plate coral is not going to come with an aptasia on the back. Um, it's not going to come with a zoanthid eating nudie branch or a gorilla crab that eats acro. So the ones you really, really have to watch out for are um, that come dirty from overseas are the zoanthids. Now zoas, I do dip. If you've seen in some of the other videos, I'll actually do a 20 minute freshwater dip because those things are so resilient, you're not gonna hurt them. LPS, uh, not so much. They're they're really like, uh, like Tidal Garden said, at their weakest point. Okay, I think I'm just repeating myself now. And I think you guys get the point and maybe you have a different opinion. And that's what the comments below are for. So you guys can leave them and we can discuss it and talk about it and you can show me um, you know, what you think, and I can tell you what I think, because it's nice when there's two, I like, I like counter arguments, you know, I like, there's always two to every single argument, it's never black and white, ever, ever, I mean, it's never just one sided, there's always, always the other side, this is a very funky looking flower pot, but I'm seeing a little bit of, see this here, this is not dead from shipping. I hope it's picking up on the camera there. This died before it shipped. So if I was sending this to me, I wouldn't send this to me. <laughs> this is not something we would send out. This is old death here and this is old death here. So it's not 100% healthy. It could have been cut. Maybe it's going to open nicely. It is a flower pot or ganipora. I think it's a long tentacle one. I'm going to toss it in here regardless because the corals want to be in the water and I'm starting to build like a little flower pot section as we go. The other one that I pulled out of the bag as I was talking was, it looks like a favia of some sorts and it's like maybe favites and maybe there's a snail on the back. Nope, looks good. So LPS, uh, that's what I think what I was saying was those can come with quite a number of pests on them so you got to watch for hammers, frog spawn torches, the euphilias really and there's a flatworm that eats them. The only good thing, oh look at that, as right as I was talking about it, a euphilia came out of the bag. Perfect timing. Thank you, divinity. Okay, why do I say that? Because I believe in divine timing and I believe everything happens for a reason. And I believe this thing is pest free because I'm not seeing any flatworms. And what I was trying to say before I got distracted by my uh, belief in God was that the flatworms are easy to see, they're easy to spot, they're big. You know what? I hope I get one. I know that's messed up to say, but I hope I get one on this order just so I can show you. So they're big and they're ugly and they're gonna be right here, right along this line where the, this is the dead skeleton that's growing, the calcified structure that meets the living tissue. Um, it's gonna usually be right along there. That's where they like to hang out and the eggs are easy to spot and you just brush them off. You could do it with your finger, you could do it with a toothbrush, you can super glue over the eggs. They're really not hard to get rid of and wrasses love them and look at that, it already came free frag. I'm going to show you something I typically don't show people on camera, but this branching hammer coral is really, really, um, I guess, fragile, easy to frag. Let me show you. Uh, like, bad demonstration. Boom. Check that out. Really, really easy. And these are looking so good. Every time I bring these in though, I'm starting to think like I should really be growing a little bit more and importing a little bit less 
It's just that there is quite an abundance of coral. So that's something I didn't realize until I went to Indonesia. There's a lot, a lot, especially when it comes to acro. Um, the, for acropora, I would say the um, supply exceeds the demand right now. I'm not selling them the way I used to. So it kind of changes with coral over time. There's like fads, if that makes sense. Acro are not really as hot as they used to be. I'm not sure why, um, or maybe it's just us, I don't know. But I find that people are really drawn to the LPS these days, the softies, zoanthids, and we grow them so well downstairs, like I don't really need to import any more, but the thing is I am a zoanthid nut, and I'm always looking for the new, a new color or new variety, and you're not gonna get that by just growing the ones you have, you're only gonna find them by um, bringing in new ones, and every single shipment, there's going to be at least one. It's almost like opening, I don't know if you've ever collected some sort of trading cards like Pokemon or Digimon if I'm going far back enough, Magic the Gathering or, you know, some sort of baseball cards. But when you open that pack, there's that chance that you're going to get something incredibly rare or new. And I kind of get that same sort of high when I'm importing coral, especially Sorry, memory card full, um, but we fixed it. So yeah, Zoas, they still they still do it for me. They still get me going. I'm um, still a very, I love them. I love the Zoas and um, farming them is, is quite, I find it quite easy and I find it very therapeutic. I love feeding them. I have, um, some of my favorite time is actually just alone in the basement, quiet, not talking, not making videos. If you can believe it or not, my mouth actually does sometimes stop moving. I know it's hard to believe. My girlfriend, she doesn't believe me, um, but it does. So let's see, I've just taken out a bunch of LPS and I'm spending more time talking and less time showing you stuff. More time talking, oh, look at this torch girl. Check this out, oh man. Jamie Edelman, if you're watching, check this out. Hey, if you're looking for reef casa tanks and you are in Florida and you want a all-in-one aquarium designed by yours truly. Um, check him out. It's a new store in the Keys. He's doing it really, really well. Um, he's just about done building it. Really nice guy. Knows this uh, Stuf, and it's called the Underwater Gardener. His name is Jamie Edelman. You can find his contact info on our site. If you live in the UK and you're looking for a tank, you got to reach out to Advanced Aquarium Consultancy. I wonder why they picked that name. They are advanced, they're into aquariums. I guess they consult. You know what? Never mind. I take it back. This hammer is beautiful. What the heck is that? Oh boy. Man, maybe I should start dipping corals. Can you see right? That white thing, that clear kind of glob globule. Is that the word? Look at that. What is that? Oh, it's a ball. Oh, you know what it is? It's probably dead bubble algae. You see right there. And then after a couple days without water, maybe it's not. She might be a sack of eggs. Oh, what are you? There's something moving in it. I have just discovered alien life. You know what, when in doubt, take it out. So I'm gonna cut it off. I've actually never seen that. That's one of the cool things um, about bringing stuff from the ocean. Imagine how much stuff in the ocean we don't even, these are eggs of something. Uh, oh, I'm glad we saw that. How many, how many things in the ocean we have yet to discover? Like there's so much under there. Like not even just animals and coral wise, but like there's got to be for sure, million percent buried civilizations under the ocean, Atlantis, more than Atlantis. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's there. And this is some heavy lift in here. If you don't have a good back, this is not the job for you. If you cannot easily lift, I would say 70 pounds, this is not a good job for you. This is, there's some heavy lifting required, but uh, yeah, probably not the best job. Why do I think there's Atl Atlantis? Because I'm really, I like, I'm always thinking about um, how everything changes and everything we've built today eventually will be gone, you know? And I always wonder like how long, what's the life expectancy of a, like a sky skyscraper in New York? A hundred years, 500 years, a thousand years, 5,000 years, 25,000, like at some point that building's gonna come down. And the earth is just so old and corals are old too. So there's got to be stuff that's been built that um, is no longer around. This is a nice blast of I was talking with a customer the other day. I still don't fully understand what a coral is. Now you can tell me it's a plant or it's an animal or it's a symbiotic relationship between zoanthellae bacteria. But 
we were talking about a plate coral and how he watched it like walk across the sand. How does it know how to do that? How it has a stomach, it has a mouth, so it eats. I think they're sentient, but it doesn't have a brain. So where is the intelligence stored? You answer me this question. When I give corals love and attention, I swear to the Lord that they perform better, they grow better. It's kind of like a plant. I think there was a study once that people that love their plants, the plants are literally healthier. It's the same with corals. I experienced the same thing. So how is it that they can eat? and grow and sting and, and do everything that they're able to do. They're such amazing little underwater creatures. They're so, I don't know if they're more advanced than a plant, but uh, they're definitely a lot more fun in order, like in terms of keeping and collecting. But I think they're intelligent. I really do. Um, I think they listen. I think that they have ears. And I think they know that when they're your favorite and you love and cherish them so much and you spend all this money on them, they decide, you know what? Now I'm going to melt and die, just because you love me. And that is the circle of life. You think you're going to keep me in captivity and grow me? And you're going to frag me and sell me for 500 an inch? No, my name is Homewrecker. And March, you shall never keep anything larger than three quarters of an inch of me. And that is the way of the universe. And too bad for you. And that is a true story, actually. I can't keep Homewrecker. I have a threshold of death that when it gets to it, oh, another nice little flower pot, when it gets to a certain size, uh, it's game over. And it's, yeah, that's just a thing. I had the same goes for um, Australian Gold Torch. That's another one I have never been able to keep long term. I actually don't know anyone that has been able to keep it long term. And I've heard a couple rumors as to why. The first thing I throw this water, and this bar next door is really busy right now. And I'm craving me a whiskey while doing this, but I'm doing Sober December. And people think that I'm crazy. I am. That's not the reason. Um, why Sober December? I feel like it is the hardest month to do it. There's all the... Oh, man, look at this plate ball. Diaceris, he fragged himself in the bag. Check this out. But this is okay, because I would probably frag this piece uh, coral anyways. He's just... Oh, shoot. He's just done some of the work for me. Um, I think it's the hardest month to do it because of you know, family parties and holiday parties and Christmas parties and all the party, party, party. And naturally, as an adult, um, those things come associated with some responsible alcohol consumption. So I like the challenge of doing it during December because I figure, you know what, that's going to be the hardest time. And then I usually break it on um, New Year's uh, Eve and I try my best not to become a belligerent drunk because kids, Alcohol is no good for you. Don't listen to anyone that tells you otherwise. It is a poison it's in every sense of the word. And uh, I'm still craving one after saying all that. Okay, where was I? I was talking about corals being sentient. And then I was throwing out water. And ADHD is a real thing. And these plate corals are looking really good. Man, I always forget that I ordered so many. Ooh, looks good on the bottom now. Looks healthy. Okay. I forget. I forget that I order them. Aha! I'm stronger than ADHD. You have a hold on my life, but sometimes I win small battles. Okay, I was saying Australian Gold Torch, which is arguably... No, what's the opposite of arguably? Not arguably? I didn't even... I don't remember ordering Acan. This better be Micromusa. I have tons of Acan. I don't need more. I hope this is a Micromusa, but it's looking quite large at the, the mouth. Um, it looks like an Acanthus strea lornawensis. I don't care that they changed the Latin names recently. I'm old school. I'm sticking to the ones they are. So, it is uh, Australian Gold Torch is undoubtedly, that's the word I was looking for, undoubtedly, undoubtedly one of the most, if not the most beautiful torch coral. It's stubby, which is kind of cool. You don't have like the crazy long spaghetti-like tentacles that you come to expect from most uh, really nice torch corals. And it has a white tip, like completely white which is a strange color and like a strange pigment in any part of any coral because usually white means death or I guess it can mean growth if we're looking at hard corals if you're looking right at the tip when they grow it's white but typically white and coral is not a good mix it is uh, if it's it means death white is not good we're bleaching we're losing color so this has a funky white almost like a white iridescent tip and super like super super they get it's called gold torch 
It's like mustard, goldeny, yellow goodness. Oh man. We might have our first casualty, which happens also to be a torch girl. I smell it because, actually it smells fine. I was expecting it to smell worse. I smell it because uh, usually the smell is a good indication if there's something going on with it, but it smells fine. So we'll just see. I'm seeing a little bit of jelliness that doesn't look too good. But one day I'll finish this Australian gold torch story. Gold torch story. I heard a rumor once that the reason why it is so hard to keep in captivity is because it is harvested from an area in Australia where the waters are actually brackish. So this person, uh, actually used to be an employee here, said that it's found kind of where a river meets the ocean. So the salinity is not 1.026 or 2.5, what we're accustomed to. It's like 2.1 or 2.2. So it's like a strange sort of brackish coral. And that's why over time, the coral will not do well in captivity because we're never keeping our tanks at salinity of 1.021 or 1.022. Um, I don't know what that is in specific gravity, like 29 or 28. And for that reason, they just slowly, this is a chalice, but it doesn't look so hot actually. I'm just showing a little bleach. They slowly kind of deteriorate with time. I've never had a customer come in the store or email me and show me a large, vibrant, glowing, healthy, beautiful colony of Australian Gold Torch that they've grown out. I've never seen it. I've been doing this a very long time. Um, I've also never had a customer come in the store with a trade-in of Australian Gold Torch. They've never said, oh, March, hey, I bought this one head off you, and look at this. I now have 10 of them. Can I trade it in for a store credit? Which happens with a ton of ton of corals. And we usually say, no, don't bring your trade-ins. We don't want your coral. Uh, why? Because people end up bringing all their leathers and all the stuff they don't want. But we do sometimes take trade-ins. It needs prior approval by myself. And I'll say, okay, bring it. And it's always store credit. It's not cash. Um, but that has never been the case, again, with this Australian gold torch. No one has ever, ever once, never, ever, ever, ever once come in with a trade-in of that coral. I... I feel like it's never going to happen. I haven't had luck keeping it. I've almost, almost completely given up importing it um, because the price has gone. If you know what that means, is that an international? Is that an internationally recognized sign? I think we all understand. Bonkers. That's the word I'm trying to use. The first time I ever saw that coral was at a store locally here called Refraft, out on Dundas, owned by my friend Jay. Um, if you don't know what Refraft is it means that you are probably quite new to the hobby because he single-handedly built a really crazy name and reputation. And uh, even though his business has since shut down, the name still commands respect and the legacy will live on through his corals that are out there. Refraft Red Dragon, Refraft Orange Passion, Refraft um, Wolverine, Refraft Jaw Dropper, Refraft Avengers, these are all very high-end acro, and I would say that he, more or less, for sure here in Canada, I would even argue in the States, and maybe globally, pioneered the naming and the um, high-end acro market. Before him, I never remember people paying what they pay for acro, even naming them. It was all Latin names, if we could even figure it out. But um, the first one I remember seeing was uh, Reef Raff Red Dragon, and he was asking $150 for an inch, and I was, I was like upset. I was upset. I couldn't believe it because I wanted it so bad. But as a 16 year old kid, I couldn't afford it. Um, and it's 150 back then, not 150 now where it's normal. That was not a normal price. Nobody was charging that for a frag and the guy, he could command it. Like it was so, so in demand. Anything he really colored up and put his name on. Um, kudos to him. He really knew what he was doing. And I emulated him in a lot, a lot of ways. So. I've kind of gone back to the basics now with our system here in the store. I'm no longer using the Red Sea Coral Pro Salt. I switched back to what I started with, which is reef crystals. Um, and that is the same salt that Jay at Reef Raft used. And I'm going to say only Reef Raft Canada is, it's really the only one that matters. There was a little US branch that opened up. I don't know if they're still kicking. If you know the whole story, um, there's really only one Reef Raft that matters. It's the one here. And I'm not going to get into that because 
Before you know it, I'm gonna have another lawsuit in my head. Oh, Refraft Asia, which is run by Jensen, his brother, is also legit, but I don't recognize, it's kind of like people not recognizing countries. I do not recognize the Refraft USA as being a legitimate Refraft. Whatever, okay. Um, what I was trying to say was that I learned a lot from him in terms of how to keep coral, how to color them up, how to keep acro especially, because that was really his forte. Like he could get color out of acro like no one else. He could command prices, like he was charging $2,500 US for a quarter inch of the graft tenuous. Nobody was, there was, this was before home records. This was before anything Walt Disney, any of that stuff. It really started with the reef graft pieces. Damn, we're pick, making pretty good time here. Um, Actually, my dog, Diggs, you guys know Diggs from the channel, of course. Diggs is actually a gift from Refrap. So he is a one of one, RR Diggs. You ain't never gonna get a frag of that guy. Uh, actually, I tried to frag him, I tried to breed him. I used to have a female. Um, he's, a, he's a type of American Bulldog. It's called a Blue Blood Alapaha. If you wanna know the real full name, that's what Diggs is. He's a Blue Blood Alapaha, like a legit one. And he was a stud. And he was designed for breeding because he's such a beautiful, beautiful animal. And um, the guy is actually a virgin. So I've tried and uh, it didn't work. And my ex ended up taking the other dog. But regardless, he was a gift from my friend Jay over at Refraft. And um, what was the thing about aqua prices? Yeah, before Home Wrecker, before Walt Disney, there was RR. And there was such a demand for his pieces in the States. So when I first started out, with the website, I would get people asking all the time to please ship reef raft pieces and, um, to the States, to, to the USA. And people would literally pay any, any price that I asked because I think the fact that it was across the border and hard to get made it so much more alluring and exclusive. And it was like, you know, these mythical creatures that you couldn't you couldn't just get you couldn't order them because they weren't in the United States it's it's difficult to have corals cross borders and people are always asking us for pieces damn speaking about reef raft and acro hold on I'm gonna get back to my my comment but I'm gonna show you some coral whoa 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 hold up let me show you this red acro that just came out of the bag look at that it's actually red so red on Acropora, incredibly, incredibly rare color. We get lots of greens, yellows, some blues, some purples. Orange is not a typical color you'll see on Acro. Orange is quite rare. And red, red like this. Um, red that isn't a Millie. So I'm not sure what the species is of this one. I'll have to go back and look at the CITES. But that is quite a rare color. And he's definitely gonna go um, over here in our Fragoon on the grow out rock. Yes, I'm gonna grow it and uh, we will call it frag box, yada, yada, yada. Um, I've tried to avoid the names. So what I was saying was it's hard for us to export the corals once they're here. So there's a couple reasons why we don't. One, you need, if you live in the USA and you're watching this, you, my good neighbor to the south, if you want this symphilia, need a, a license from Fish and Wildlife. So. Unless you have a business, as far as I know, as long as if, if you have a business, if you don't have a business, you cannot obtain that license. You need to be a registered um, importer in order to get your license with Fish and Wildlife Services. Number two, once you have that, you need another permit, which is called CITES, which is the Convention of Endangered uh, CITES, C I T E S, Convention on Endangered Trade, no, Convention. CITES, Trade of Endangered, the Convention, International Convention of Trade of Endangered Species, something like that. I think I got all the words right in the wrong order. But regardless, you need that document. Uh, so you need those two. And for a CITES re-export, I believe it's 400 bucks US. That's if it's one piece or many pieces. So just keep that in mind. You need to pay, you need to have a business. You need to have an import license, which is gonna cost something. You're gonna need a CITES permit, which is four to 500 US. I elastic band in the tank. And then you need to pay shipping. So a box like this, this is about 24 inches by maybe 16 by 16. I would say to ship this from here to Florida with Air Canada or WestJet or something like that, you're probably about 400 bucks. So 
Is that worth it? Are you gonna order? Are you gonna open a business and get the permit to grab one coral and pay 400 plus another 400 just to ship it? It doesn't make sense. You can find it there. All the corals we have here are in the states. Um, if you have a store and you want us to ship to you, that's a different story. If you have a permit, then we can talk. But there's gonna be a minimum. And that's the very long-winded reason why we don't ship corals to uh, outside of this country. It's hard enough to get them here and then it's a whole nother ball game to get them out. Also, you can just go to titlegardens.com and buy everything you want from him because the guy has basically every coral under the sun and he's awesome and I have a lot of respect for that guy. These will also all be gone in about two to three weeks. We'll be ready to reorder again. So um, the demand's good right in our market. If, if I was bringing in a bunch and I'm sitting on it, then you know I would look at to maybe um, sending more to other countries, but People always ask us to franchise, actually, this business. They've been asked every every six months for the past 12 years. Someone is offering to franchise Fragbox. When it can be done, absolutely. We can grow it and we can make all this money, you know? That's all that matters is money, 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 money. Except it doesn't and that's not why I got into it. And to me, franchise just means money means grow, 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 grow. For what? For the sake of growing? For the sake of selling more? Um, I'm not interested. I've, I'm, I'm happy and, and business is good and I'm so grateful and uh, I just feel like if I took on a, a franchise would just be designed to, to make money. If you go and open a McDonald's or a Burger King or a Subway Sandwiches, which I think is the largest franchise in the world right now with 94,000 locations, um, you go to open a Subway Sandwiches, you're not doing it because you absolutely love subs and you can't imagine a life without subs. What are you going to do if you're not making subs? I'm sorry if I'm offending you out there, you work at Subway Sandwiches or you make sandwiches for a living. That's not anyone's calling. It's just, it just isn't. Um, it's, it's designed to make moolah, m -m 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 money. Uh, this is my calling. This is my passion. I'm lucky that I get to do it and make money. But it didn't start like that. It wasn't to make money. I have a cousin that's trying to figure out what to do with life. And I keep telling her, um, she's about to drop out of college. I keep telling her, you got to do what you love. You know, find a passion, find a calling, find something. The money will come after. It's hard in the beginning. The money will follow. And I know it's kind of silly, and maybe you've heard it before, and uh, maybe I'm sounding like an old man and I'm just repeating what's already been said, but it's so true. After having lived it, it's true. It's absolutely true because it doesn't feel like work when I come here, when I'm hanging out with customers and the staff and tending to the corals, even when um, stuff's going sideways. It's still, it's a little bit stressful, but it doesn't feel like work. So. That is my one recommendation. Recommendation? That's not a word. Recommendation from one business owner to someone else. That's why I wouldn't franchise. Oh, another little nice scenario. Check it out. I'm gonna kiss the camera. Mwah! Um, don't kiss corals. But um, I'm gonna actually put them right here. I'm setting them up right now in our WYSIWYG section. So over the next couple of days, I'll take some photos of them. That's the reason why I'm not super keen on franchising. Um, you know, I bring in someone and then, you know, okay, half a million bucks, or let's say a million dollars, right? To set up another store like this, the franchise, you get the name and then, and then what? And then you're gonna want your million dollars back and then some, and I just feel like the quality, oh, <laughs> quality, I'm not allowed to use that word anymore because my friends in the UK are always busting my chops for saying quality, but I feel like the quality inevitably degrades with growth. It's going to lose its charm and it's just going to be designed to create, like I said, money. Okay, I'm starting to repeat myself. I think the point is coming across though. I think I'm making myself pretty clear. Um, if not, you can email me about opening a franchise and I can make it more clear on how I'm not interested in doing it. And I'm also a little, I don't mean to be so negative today. Hmm, am I negative? I'm usually a pretty like positive, optimistic, glass, half full dude. Usually, I think I usually am, yeah. 
But um, I started with pests, and then talking about lawsuits, and then... No, I'm not being negative. Okay, I'm just talking out my butt now. Hold on. Aha, partnerships. Partnerships, partnerships, partnerships. In this industry, I've only seen them end poorly. Um, but how's that thing go? The only ships you don't get on are sinking ships and partnerships, so... Refraft! Jay and Jensen, brothers, couldn't make it work. Separated into Refraft Asia and Canada. Um, there's another store called, uh, what did Ryan call it? it was two guys, Ryan and, and Daniel, but they, uh, R2O? No, Aquatic Kingdom. That was a partnership. I think they were friends. No longer. Uh, Oakville Reef Gallery. I'm talking about local stores here. I'm, there's gonna be more if I, if I think about it long enough where two people decide, you know what, let's get together, let's open a shop like this. It'll be easier because um, there's going to be two of us. Oh, there was a shop down the street at Briar Hill and Dufferin actually 15 years ago, same thing. So let's get together because there's two of us and we'll pool our money together and we'll work really hard and we're both passionate. So immediately that means we're going to have to, you know, it's going to work. I've yet to see it work. I'm not saying it can't work. I'm saying that it's a tricky enough business to get into already without trying to feed two mouths. What happens to the coral here? Without trying to feed two mouths and concede to two people's ideas. So I've never had a partner. It's always been me from day one. And um, I guess the closest thing I had to a partner was Tia. Ah, but she was more like, uh, like a consultant. Like I would just run every single idea by her because she's got She's just so passionate about the hobby and like really would help me see things from uh, a different angle completely. She's going to be very missed around here, but I cannot, I cannot be upset for anyone that wants to grow and anyone that wants more out of life, um, that wants to build, that wants to experience financially and and career-wise. There's, there's, it's only only good can come from it um, for for everyone really. It's good for Tia. Um, it, it's going to be different for the store. I'm not trying to say it's good for the store, but it also opens up. Um, anytime anyone leaves, just by the nature of it happening, it leaves room for new energy. Um, if you haven't noticed yet, oh, this is a nice chalice. Look at this. Mummy eye, pink and yellow. Ooh, hello, little snail. You know what? I'm going to keep you. Um, if you have The whole video is complete without the battery dying. Okay, what I was saying is if you haven't noticed, March... Why am I talking in third person? I feel like a weirdo. I'm very spiritual. I'm very, uh, I'm very into um, the energy and the universe and the way of the world and source and God and creation and all of that. And uh, it's it's good for everyone. It is. When the time has come, the time has come. And now it is time to continue opening corals and talking about their beautiful appearance. I think we don't have a single DOA yet. This is a very good shipment. This is a very cool type of blasto, so I don't know the name of it really, but I do see a couple different kinds. Sometimes they come like this where they're really, mm, let's see if we can focus, they're really almost like encrusted right onto the rock. This one would be tricky to frag. The heads are super close together too, so typically we frag blastomusas down to a single head because I find that's what people want. They want variety and they want to buy just one, but this would be a tricky one just because the size, it's on the rock, so that's something I would offer up on the site um, just the way it is and that's something that you learn sort of over with time with experience if you've ever thought about doing something like this uh, March does do a little bit of consulting on the side it is not free why is it not free March because the channel is free you can watch all the videos or if you want you know March's personal cell number and um, maybe some contacts overseas to order from and you want uh, expert advice and help with my 14 years of experience doing this. March does do consulting. I am a very busy guy, but I want to see other people succeed. And it's good for it's good for the industry. Every time that a store opens and does well, it's really good for everyone. Everyone wins. And I never understood like the mentality between shops. So there is a lot of rivalry here in the city. A lot of hate. On two occasions that I can remember, people have had their stores spiked or nuked or whatever you want to call it, where someone has come in and actually poured um, 
stuff into the tanks to kill the animals to sabotage the store. I know it's really disgusting to even imagine something like that. One of them was even caught on camera. I should go back and see if I can find it. It's pretty nuts that someone is that bold and that evil. I'm going to use the word evil to do that because you're not only trying to like unfairly sabotage competition and you know competition is, is great. Competition is good. Um, but you're also killing the animals. So evil, that's the word I'm going to use. It really, truly, it really is evil. And uh, it's happened twice that I know of. I'm sure it's happened more than that. Uh, I wish it would never happen again. Unfortunately, it's probably not the last time. So I don't know how I started going down this hole. I feel like I'm being so negative today. But I'm in actually a really, really good mood. Um, yeah, why do people do that? Competition. Competition is good. Healthy competition is good. Um, especially in this industry. We have a ton of rivalry in the city, but I feel, I guess, a little bit lucky that I can walk into any other store today. I'm on good terms with everyone. I've always tried to be. I've always seen, always thought that the pie is big enough for everyone. And it is. It absolutely is. Because over the years, these are really nice brain corals, but over the years that I've been doing this, every single year, without fail, so this was founded in 2009, 9, 10? 2010. So we're in 2013. It's 13 years. Every single year, every six months or so, I'll see one store open, one store close. Someone new gets in, someone gives up and gets out. And um, throughout that time, even with stores opening and closing, I've only seen our sales increase. We've only done better and better and better. The city grows, the hobby grows, the pie is really big enough for everyone so i don't understand that scarcity mentality it only i find it only attracts like a scarcity sort of energy if you're in a in a state of of fear of competition it's not a good state to be in it's not a, it's not a good energy and not a good vibe you're going to put up leave me alone crazy people on marley it's past midnight we're closed obviously what store would be open you're crazy. I'm here crazy working. This this street gets a lot, a lot of riffraff. I don't know where we're going to put this open brain, but this is beautiful. Now I'm starting to run out of space here, so I need to really be careful with where I'm placing them because um, it happens where in the morning we'll come back and then we have some crazy, crazy aggression and not good for the corals at all. So, speaking about competition, I've never really um, <laughs> bothered to to look at them or focus on them. I've always just thought, focus on ourselves, focus on what we can offer and what we can do. And for us, I think the difference has always been uh, service. So I'm not the only store in the city that you can go and buy corals at. I'm not the only store where you can buy fish or vertebrates. I'm not even the cheapest. I don't have the most colorful. There's nothing overly spectacular about the shop. It's probably one of the smallest ones here. I don't have the most selection. Um, my hours are okay. So why, why 12 years of, or 13 years now of continued uh, growth and success? And I think the answer is service because that's where I find we can compete and where we can differentiate ourselves from other stores. You can't really compete too much on price because there's minimum advertised price for things like Radeon and um, well, Trident's Red Sea and some of them enforce it a lot more than others. So on price, when it comes to hardware, it's more or less the same. Um, when it comes to coral, you can a little bit, but I think on coral we're pretty fair. Um, fish, we're not competing at all because we do almost almost virtually none we do mostly captive bread we do some ocean caught fish and i'm leaning back towards getting rid of those and doing just captive bread again after a very powerful um, psychedelic trip something was telling me leave the fish alone leave the fish in the ocean like we had so many years of success without selling them i'm trying to branch into them but what for what for like i don't why? I just finished telling you how I'm not interested in growth and money. 
And um, I used to sell fish. So I can tell you that when we brought them in, if 30% were dead upon arrival, that was a good shipment. That's standard. Within the following week, if another 20% died, still standard. So I always felt horrible um, taking them out of the ocean. Within a week, you have 50% in the trash. And you got to be a little bit a little bit heartless, I'm going to say, to really sell fish. It's it's quite difficult. I wasn't able to figure it out. And um, if you're able to do it, that's awesome. Maybe I take that back. Maybe you're not heartless. Maybe I'm just an idiot and I wasn't able to figure it out. But I've been lucky enough to make money with, with the coral and without the fish. So we're definitely not competing on the fish. Um, we're just doing 90% is captive bred. And there's so much captive bread. I would, my mind was blown actually. I went to the Netherlands and visited Day Yong Marine Life. 168 different species of captive bread fish, man. These guys, this is a truly, truly great company and I can't wait to share that video with you. Really, really cool video. I'm still like, oh, still in shock from that. Um, so what I was trying to say was, that's not our leg up either. It's definitely not the fish. De it's. All of it together, maybe as, as a whole, sure. But um, I think it's the service. I think we provide a little bit better service than some of the other guys. At least we try to. And if you go over there, I can take you and show you what we have on the board. Um, it's a reference for the staff here. If they get stuck and don't know what to do. So we have a written return policy. And we have a written DOA policy. And we have our protocols and standards and everything that's written in a super official but on top of all of it the number one rule is delight the customer make the customer happy treat the customer the way you want to be treated if it was the how's the saying go if the shoes on the other foot if the tables were turned something like that am i making sense how would you want to be treated in that scenario and every time we have a um, upset customer or we screwed up or something happens you know, we have this rare opportunity to fix it and to really shine. And I think a lot of people are surprised with, you know, sometimes they come in quite hot. Something happens and um, I actually really enjoy turning that experience around. Okay, we're making pretty good time here, about halfway through. The only issue is this tank is looking really full. Like, I'm getting down to the last little spots here for non-aggressive corals and then uh yeah i'm kind of screwed um but good thing about the fragoon there's all this space now here on the sand bed so i'm able to easily place um, pieces right around i just got to rethink what i'm doing here with this pump because look at this i need the flow but this is not working we're kind of spraying water right out of the tank Alrighty, one of these boxes is something i haven't imported in a very very long time and it's going to be kind of boring when i tell you what it is but one of our customers requested it and uh, more or less begged if we could please, please bring this thing in from overseas because he can't find this anywhere. And I said, sure, it's not gonna be cheap because shipping is quite expensive um, compared to what it used to be. Uh, actually, everything is expensive. Ta name one thing, comment below. One thing that has gone down in price in the past 10 years. Tell me one thing. And if you get that, you get some bony brownness, whatever. Points. Oh man, I'm tired. I think I just said bonus points. Trying to say brownie and bonus. But he actually asked us to import some real live rock. Okay. Some more blastomooses in here. And that's something we haven't brought in in a long, 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 long time. And um, why? Because everyone buys Marco. It's inexpensive. But if you've been in this for a while, you know, you know. You don't need me to tell you that real good live rock, that real Pukani, that real, real Tonga branch, you know what I'm talking about. Needs no explanation. It's, uh, it's still the best in terms of look, texture, filtration, capability, um, color. Overall, live rock is still is still the bomb. Now, the rocks we have in the market today, the Marco rocks, stacks from Two Little Fishies, they're good. 
It's what I use throughout the whole store. I'm not using real live rock anywhere in here except the sump. In the sump, I have some very, very old, like 20 year old rock that's followed me from store to store to store that I constantly use um, because I think it's like a cast iron pan. I think it just gets better with time. Um, so we brought in, I think there's 50 kilos, I wanna say. I'm not 100% sure what it's gonna cost yet, but if you're local and you're still watching this far, I'm surprised and also very grateful. You can, um, oh shoot, come by and pick up if you want to pick out some uh, some real live rock. I think it's gonna be, uh, uh, I'm gonna guesstimate, I wanna say 14 Canadian dollars a pound. That's my, my guesstimation. I have to do a little bit of March calculations, um, but I can let you know more precisely. Okay, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. Just, uh, so nerdy that I'm getting excited over rock, but it's just, it's really in there. It's really, really nice. Like, just so porous. Like, I can't explain how good this stuff is. This really, really is ugh, the best. Okay, show me which one you were talking about, which one you were hyping up. I like this. Or this is bananas. Oh yeah. yeah, it is bananas. You look because there's bananas. It's gorgeous. I know. So Mark is over here hyping it up and Tia is saying, no, it's going to be more expensive. Stop it. Which it will be. <laughs> it is probably one of the nicer open brains. If you guys notice in the video, I just turned off the camera. I think it was like mid sentence because this like wave of sleep just hit me and I couldn't talk anymore. So it's been a couple days since I was first recording and now they're all starting to open up. Do you have a favorite Mark? This tu favorito? The or, same. Or the pe this Pitinio thing is really cool. This is stunning. Yeah, that's what they're really cool. amazing. This one is like textbook. Like if you type Pitinia in Google, that's what you get. Yeah. It's just bang on. Color, size, overall, really, really nice shipment. I think what I'm going to do is put the camera down now and I'm going to come back with a little bit more excitement and energy and really kind of go through one by one because there's some really Funky. Look at this Blastomusa here that's got the kind of black splotchy. How would you describe that? Black and splotchy? Like black and camouflagey? Look. It is freckled with freckled. a cool purple. Freckled with cool purple. This is deserving of a name, and I don't usually name LPS. Actually, I'm very against naming LPS, except for this, which is the one and only atomic bomb hammer that we basically never get except for right now. So if you've ever been looking for this one, dum -ba -bum, there's one that's just been then hiding in the in the rough. Even the torches, look how nice they look. There was a few deaths. I'm always gonna show you guys the good and the bad. So Lobos, they didn't ship too good uh, this time around. Sorry, Lobophilia. A couple of the torches, which is to be expected. They don't, the really nice ones don't always ship the best. One of the Ghanis, I think in the video I was saying it wasn't looking so hot, but overall really, really happy with the way it looks. Um, so we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll give them a couple more days and then we'll come back and we'll pick up the camera again and we'll do a full walkthrough and give you some commentary on all this goodies. That's it. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.